So, uh, so now let's transition into sort of a general discussion on reflecting on both uh, presentations, and I'll again use my privilege as moderator to ask the first question, and is to, to both of you, now that you've sat through each other's presentations, kind of what do you see as maybe some common, common threads to these pretty divergent right, uh, tools? What? <laughs> Put you on the spot. I've been talking enough just now. Um, I think the most obvious common thread is uh, our we both gave cautionary tales about new and shiny things and uh, you know, warnings about how we need to carefully consider um, expectations, especially you know, over-inflated expectations and uh, how we need to keep our eye on uh, what is really important. Uh, in, in my case, in the drone case, it's really um, the data that we collect and what kind of information we want to get out of, of that data set or you know, whatever you're collecting so that we can have the, we can deliver that information to uh, policy makers and decision makers to, uh, to, to act on those, those information. Um, and then, yeah, do you want to say something about your case? Yeah, I mean, the other commonality, I loved your hype diagram. Mm -hmm. um, expectation, I think that's common. Um, we've, we've experienced a bit of the trough of disillusionment <laughs> in our own work, um, and hopefully now we're on the, what is it, the slope of enlightenment? Yeah. Um, so I think different information technologies uh, can learn from each other in how to navigate that slope and anticipate it. Uh, also in critically in thinking about long-term feasibility of this work, um, because perhaps you could argue that it should be led out of the research community and civil society, but how do you make it long-term? Because the world needs this kind of stuff managed well, and it shouldn't be in the hands of entities that rely on two to five year project cycles. Okay. Uh, any cross-cutting questions from the audience here in the back row? Thank you. Uh, Toby, jumping, jumping exactly on that. Um, are you hoping that actually some international or public organization will take <laughs> over um, or that you would be incorporated and in, I don't know that this data would be the official um, database of uh, the UN? Yeah, interesting or, question. Um, we're going for a two-year process to evaluate the future institutional and funding business model of Trace after 2021. We've got a major grant from the Norwegians uh, and the Moore Foundation until then. Um, possibly, but possibly not, given that the, this needs to remain uh, an impartial platform and it is, who are the impartial actors? Uh, of course, we're not impartial either. Um, but you could argue that we're more impartial because we've got less of a vested interest than a company or a government, obviously. But an international, maybe, an FAO-type organization, possibly. But many of us know how those, operate, how those institutions work. They're often, they're often too lethargic uh, for this kind of, um, this kind of uh, system. So we're on a learning journey now to think about that. Uh, and we're, we're very attentive and very uh, interested to hear uh, ideas, and we're going to be talking with many people about how, how such a thing as this can be developed in the future. Okay, um, I have another cross-cutting question for both of you. Um, so, so both of you are really on the cutting edge of adopting some new information technologies. That's a good term. Um, so what are the roles of our community's theories and conceptual frameworks in guiding you in adopting these new approaches? <laughs> well, I mean, we, uh, theories and conceptual frameworks, I mean, there's many, many roles, I think, because, I mean, I'm a big believer of, uh, of conceptual frameworks because I think they provide starting points for a common conversation and a common discourse. Um, and I'm often astonished uh, by how people are on slightly different pages because they're speaking slightly different languages or they have slightly different worldviews. And we need to get beyond that. Um, so one simple example is the simple list, the typology, if you like, of of types of information that add up to uh, a more complete understanding of transparency. Um, prior to that, and still, there is, a lot of, uh, there is a lot of confusion and people talking past each other, using transparency, traceability synonymously. So you know, definitions, harmonization, frameworks, and then even theories can help an enor enormous amount in that. And also help us understand stopping rules, help us understand what information is needed for who, where, when, 
Um, and where else, well, what are the, where is the next weakest link? It's no longer information, it's something else. And to understand that, you've got to have a conceptual framework or model of, of, how, the world, of how your world is working to know what are the other factors, the other push and pull factors that mm -hmm. shape the outcomes mm -hmm. that you're working on. Um, so I guess in our case, uh, Serge and I have thought quite a bit about those kinds of issues and uh, we've written those also in our book uh, in, in sort of almost a step-by-step -step, um, kind of uh, framework for helping people to think through, you know, first of all, whether they need to be using this technology, you know, is it really suitable for their purpose, and then if they um, decide that it, 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 it is a, a suitable technology, then go through the steps of thinking uh, what, what type of drones they would be using and what kind of uh, data analysis they would need to be thinking about right from the beginning and, and uh, the funding aspects, the capacity building aspects and, and, all this, and some of the other uh, challenges, uh, the points on the challenges that I mentioned. Um, so, so um, yeah, so I think conceptual framework for adopting this technology or any technology is, is, is really important. Oh, great. Okay, thanks. Um, was there one more question? Was that on the, the answer back? you wanted? Sorry? Was that the answer? I did, yeah, no, I did. Well, I was just, I'm sitting here trying to think about like yeah. how to kind of synthesize. No, it's, a, it's a key question for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And it's good to hear. Mm. Right. Oh, one more there? One more. Okay. Last question and then coffee. Thanks so much. So I think one of the commonalities between both of these technologies is that they're forms of radical transparency and that they're yeah. disclosing information without the consent of all the people that are being observed. And I'd be curious, especially when we think about these commodity production systems or you know, small actors that are maybe affecting conservation outcomes, how do you think about integrating the ethics of human interactions and the actions that individuals have and the, the responsibility we have as researchers towards them um, as you develop and kind of deploy a lot of the technologies that you're working on? Uh -huh. can't pass That's it. an excellent question. Yeah, it's an excellent question. Thanks, thanks, Robert. Um, we think about that a lot, and I'll, I'll be honest. That um, so, a question that um, that I now always ask when we're recruiting people is: Is all transparency a good thing? Um, and the people that immediately say yes typically don't get the job. Um, so we need to build in safeguards, um, and we need to think about how we can build in safeguards at multiple levels. I think is my best short answer. And that includes thinking about the indicators. It includes thinking about um, the first mover advantage in showing proof of concept because we've talked quite a lot uh, earlier in, in, in the week about how quickly um, narratives can take hold as to what something is used for and why and what's behind it. Um, so the kind of powerful proof of concepts and examples that get out there first will, will claim uh, the narrative about risks and opportunities. So we have an active role um, in trying to ensure that that is uh, balanced and that includes consideration of the things like um, good guys leaving bad places and providing a vacuum for bad actors that will crush the vulnerable, for example. Um, but it also includes trying to develop proof of concept as to how transparency can, can leverage more positive engagement, in this case of buyers, work that we're now planning uh, to do in, in Indonesia, linking um, with you as well. <laughs> linking, for the benefit of the wider team, we work together, uh, conflict of interest. Um, we um, linking buyers to, uh, to districts um, that are trying to adopt jurisdictional approaches. Um, so there, of course, paramount is consideration of, of smallholders. But it, I think it's a fundamental uh, question because these can easily become runaway. We, is, we can quickly lose control of the narrative, um, as is possibly... It should be because we're just the provider, but we have a real active role in trying to shape that narrative. Um, and I think that's through putting in safeguards and getting out examples and trying to communicate them effectively. Do you have anything to add? I think that, well, well, in our case, it's, uh, I, I guess we, our thinking is more in terms of uh, 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 the issue of animal welfare. Um, and uh, we, we did publish something a couple of years back, um, you know, just encouraging researchers who are wanting to use drones to adopt the precautionary principle. You know, first, do no harm. If you're not sure what your technology is doing to the animals, then maybe stop and do the necessary background research before, before using the technology. 
Okay, what a great session. Some really thoughtful, interesting ideas. And yeah, let's go into coffee. <laughs>